Good. So welcome everyone. I'm Pastor JB. Amen. My role and responsibility this morning is to go over what we discussed yesterday. It was an extraordinary uh, time of teaching with Apostle Elijah. Uh, and then everyone remembers this book. Mm -hmm. By the end of today, everyone has to have their own copy. I am serious. If you know a person who cannot afford to buy one, buy one for them. I didn't hear any amen. 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 We always buy books online. We buy books everywhere. This is an opportunity to buy books from our own house. Amen. amen. And then for the following Sundays, we should have like uh, books, selling books outside. Because we have many writers in the house. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. And this is only the beginning. <laughs> More books to come. Amen. So yesterday we focused on uh, prophesy with Apostle Elijah. And it was a great time. Amen. H who was here yesterday? <laughs> Hallelujah. Almost everyone. Amen. So we learned a lot of things. I'm going to go through them uh, very quickly here. And then by the time I'm done, Apostle will come here to finish the, the service. Amen. So we learned yesterday that God had called us to be his voice. Okay? I am not talking about your neighbor. I'm talking about you. God has called you to be his voice. And this is serious. You have to personalize it. God has called me to be his voice. Hallelujah. We learned that in the Old Testament, um, God called a very few people, called uh, prophet, prophets. Those were the people who were talking on behalf of God. Hallelujah. Very few people. Their role was to come and tell the truth, mostly to the power. When a king was not doing well, a word will come. When God wanted to change something, God will send the person to talk to that person. Hallelujah. Uh, you, we all remember what God said in Isaiah 45, chapter 1. I'm going to read very quickly here. God sent the prophet Isaiah to Cyrus and said this. That is the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut. Amen. I will go before you and I will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures. I can go on and on and on. And God says, so that you may know that I am your Lord. Amen. Always God will send a person to talk to you about what he's going to do. God is talking to someone here and say, I'm going to level down the mountain that is in front of you. I will level it to level zero. I will cut these bars of iron and I will free you. I will free you for sins. I will free you for anything that is bugging you. I will free you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The word of God is something you have to receive. You receive, you tap into it, and you are free. Amen. Amen. In the, the verses that I just read, um, Cyrus was to go fight and capture Babylon. A very fortified city with holes like 300 feet up and 70 feet thin. You understand? With um, watch, uh, how do you call them? Watch um, towers, 250. So anything that comes from far, they see it and then they defeat you before even you get closer. Hallelujah. But a word defeated them. This is not like any other word. It's a word that was coming from God. If God gives you a word, take it and walk with it. Cyrus and his people 
even though they were small in numbers and not that powerful, because a word came out from God, defeat was already in enemy's camp. Babylon was captured. Hallelujah. I'm praying for the same for you. If a word has been given to you, take it and walk with it. Hallelujah. For us, with Jesus, those who have accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior, we, we now have direct access to God. You remember in Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 to 51, we're talking about the veil that was torn apart from top to the bottom. This was not a light tissue that someone can just tore apart. This was a thick tissue, very thick, that was separating the, the, the presence of the Lord and everyone else. No one had access to that place uh, except the high priest once a year with a rope tied on them just in case they're not coming back. This was very serious. But that veil was torn apart, giving us access to the presence of the Lord 24-7. Hallelujah. So yesterday, Apostle said it in a very clear way, we can hear the voice of the Lord and we can talk on his behalf. Hallelujah. The message was centered on Joel chapter 2. Verse 28 to 29, that says, And I shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. My sons and my daughters shall prophesy. You shall prophesy. You shall prophesy. And the young men shall see visions. And the old men shall, see, shall dream dreams. Even on the male and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Everyone is included. Hallelujah. We heard uh, this example of the listening to the right frequency. For sure, if you want to listen to 88.9 and you tune in something else, CNN or something else, you're not going to, to listen to 88.9. Am I right? So you need to tune to the right frequency to be able to listen to it. Even if it's noisy around you, when you focus to the right voice, that is the voice you're going to hear. These teachings we have been receiving is for everyone to benefit from. So everyone will benefit from the prophetic word. Hallelujah. The word of prophecy charges you with the word to go to a higher mountain. That is the purpose here. Giving you a word that will lift you up and then you will accomplish something you would have never been able to accomplish before like King Cyrus. Amen? Some 10 years plus, uh, we were new in the church and stuff like that. And then I remember that time I was able to do a, um, uh, a word of encouragement. And... I will receive always a word of encouragement from Apostle, always. One of the words said to me one day, um, I have never heard a man speak with such authority. He was talking about me. Um, definitely at that time, I did not think I had any authority. Um, honestly, I was still learning English. I could sing the songs, but I could not explain really what they meant. I did not see that man of authority who could stand in front of other men and teach and say something that could change people's lives. But he saw in me a future. You understand? That's what the prophecy brings. The prophecy will speak about your future. Amen? Where God is bringing you, what God sees. You embrace it or not. If you don't, then that, that's it. Definitely, if you see a homeless, it, there is no point to talk about his situation, he's not eating and stuff like that. If you want to give him a word that will bring him out of this situation, you have to come up with a prophecy that God can give you at that time. Speak about the future. Speak about what this man is able to do. Hallelujah. His situation, he knows it himself. He's the one who spent uh, night outside. Amen? Amen. 
we got this example of overturning a situation and Apostle spoke about Gideon. Gideon was uh, hiding against the enemy. Did not want to, you, you know, you know the enemy is out there. People can do something, but you are so afraid, you act cowardly in your corner. You don't want to say anything. God did not go to Gideon and say, Gideon, you are such a coward. You live in fear. Come on, you are a man. Man up. God did not say that. Hallelujah. Did God say that? God said, man of valor. You have value. So God spoke to the potential that was in him to stir up something that he did not know he had. Or he knew, but he was a fear uh, man. He was fearing. And God sent him to overthrow the Midianites. Hallelujah. A word, a word of prophecy. It's not like any word. When people pray for you, pay attention to the word they are telling you. Because it's coming from a person in position of uh, authority. It's coming from God. Hallelujah. Yesterday, a man that was, um, has joined the church recently, uh, uh, he always amazes me by his worship and his willingness to, 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 do, to be there. So he spoke to me and said, okay, he, he hasn't been here for more than a month. And then he said to me, I would like to join the, the children ministry. I want to do something with the children. I said, oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> this is a man who did not know Cross Point a month ago. Hallelujah. But when he was talking to me, I was seeing other things in him. And then I, start, I, I gave him a word of prophecy. I said, I see in you a preacher. Uh, you want to work with kids, but I see in you way more than that. Now, he received the word. He jumped even. Hallelujah. Eh? I only know one group of people who take the word right now. Before even you finish, they make it yours. Yeah. Uh -huh. You probably know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. These are good examples. Before the, the prophecy is, is done, grab it. Because it, it's not you who is going to do the work. It's God who is going to empower you to do the work. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We spoke about prophecy and grace. Um, we um, spent some time on Romans chapter 8, where God says, if God is for you, who can be against you? I, I understand you may be in a situation where the prophecy they give you does not move you. Because it speaks about something that is impossible. But if you keep looking at what you can do as a person, you will never accomplish what God wants you to accomplish. So God is saying this morning, if I am for you, me, God, who can be against you? Who can stand against my plans for you? The plans for God in your life will come to pass, hallelujah. Despite what you think right now and despite what your enemies think right now. You may not be qualified right now. Don't worry. Tap into it. And then God will qualify you. Yeah. The Bible says God calls those who are not qualified. Uh -huh. If you know you are not qualified and God calls you. If you look at your circumstances, you will shrink back, you will stay there, you will hide yourself like Gideon. But God calls the unqualified and he qualifies them, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's for his glory, it's not for your glory. Hallelujah. This moment of uh, prophecy we're learning with Apostle, because it's for everyone, everyone should participate. Everyone should learn. Hallelujah. Prophecy will not only come from one or two people. It is for everyone. Hallelujah. But you have to exercise it. Hallelujah. The more you do, the more you become better at it. The more you listen to the voice of God. And the more you deliver. Hallelujah. We learned that we should not center our prophecy on sin. You look at some, someone who is doing something wrong. You go to him. And that's what you say. Brother, you live in sin. <laughs> he, he may even slap you. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Prophecy starts with a sense of compassion, not hatred. Hallelujah. Compassion. That's love I was talking about. Don't condemn the person because that, that's not the goal. Eh? You have to focus on the goal. Where are we going here? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13 says, And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest, the greatest of all of them is love. When there is love in you, if it's love that is bringing you to my brother who has been living in sin and you're trying to change the situation, if truly is love, you will focus on where he should be, where he's going. If it's not love, you're going to can condemn him and tell him about everything he's doing wrong. Hallelujah. Do we all agree? I know many people were here yesterday. Amen? You all agree. Amen? When you approach a person who is in any condition, what you have to do is to ask God. What are your hopes and your dreams for this person? Regardless of the situation of the person. God, what do you want to do in this situation? This is a person who is on drugs, on alcohol, and you name it. But God, what do you want to do? And God will direct you. What hope do you have for this person? What dreams do you have for this person, God? Those who go to the uh, prison ministry know what I'm talking about. The people are already in prison. Okay? So there is a bunch of things you should not talk about. What they have done that brought them there, everyone knows. They are in prison. So let's talk about the future. Let's bring in them something that when they leave that place, they are already transformed and they are ready to be used outside there. We all live in prison at some time. Prison of so many things. So many things. Hallelujah. So let's not focus on the prison and how cold this thing is. And how, No, no, no. Let's focus on where God is bringing us. Hallelujah. What do you want me to do, God? We learned that prophecy starts. How, how does a prophecy start? We learned about diagnosis. Uh, pro prognostic. Amen? Most people will focus on the diagnosis. You know, you're sick. Your temperature is like this. You smell alcohol and these kind of things, right? So you, you, you focus on that. You focus on the condemnation. Um, that's now what prophecy we learned yesterday is supposed to bring us. We learned the example of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19, verse 1 to 10, and even Gideon. In Luke chapter 19, 1 to 10, Zacchaeus, uh, he says somewhere, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Zacchaeus <laughs> was a tax collector, okay? I'm one of them, but <laughs> a honest one, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh. Why am I talking about Zacchaeus? <laughs> so Zacchaeus, love you back. Zacchaeus was hidden somewhere in a tree. Jesus is passing by, and definitely Zacchaeus is afraid. He's, he's short, but that was an excuse. Okay? You took money of, the money of people, so many people here. So he's trying to go somewhere where he can see Jesus. His heart needed Jesus. He wanted Jesus, but he could not come closer. Hey, kids were there who were smaller and shorter and weaker than him, right? <laughs> they were there, but he chose a place where he was safe from everyone. Ah, but Jesus singled him out. Zacchaeus, come here immediately. It was an order. You know, when an order is given, even the people who hate you around, they're not going to do anything. Come here immediately. Everyone is under arrest. You come. No one will touch you. It's done. Jesus is handling the matter. 
Amen. And then Jesus said, okay, you know what? I will come to your house tonight to eat. Um, we have to understand something here. This is a sinner. And Jesus is inviting himself in his house. You understand? Unbelievable. He thought where he was, no one could see him. He thought even his sins were hidden. Hmm? Jesus could not see him. But Jesus singled it out. Him and his sins and everything he has done wrong. But not in the way of condemning him. But in a way of opening my arms, embracing you. Jesus is embracing us the way we are. The way we are. You have been a killer and whatever. You destroyed people's properties. You have, you have been stealing people's money. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus is opening his arms today and say, come the way you are. I'm actually today, I'm going in your house and I will dinner there. Amen? This was a shock and a surprise for the people who were around us. Okay, how come? How can you do that? That is what Jesus is telling you the way you are. You have something and you're saying this, I cannot expose it. There is nothing you can hide. Absolutely nothing. But Jesus is opening his arms and say, okay, come the way you are. I will clean you myself. Hallelujah. The prophecy we are teaching here is, is honestly based on um, empowering people, understanding who you are. Amen. When Jesus says, Zacchaeus, come down here, G Jesus was spoken about his potential. Amen. He was not there to give a, a word of con condemnation, but he was talking about his poten potential, who you can be. God did not create Zacchaeus to be a person who is going to take people's money. No. So God knows who he created, who you should be. But he sees who you are right now. And then the solution comes when you accept, when you come out of the, your hidden place and then you come down. Hallelujah. So most people will condemn will speak about the problem, will center the prophecy on the sin, and then people will just leave and go, you know? If we stand here and we start by one, by one, by one, telling publicly everything we know you have been going through, you know, you did this, you took your brother's car, and then you took my money, you never give my money back, and we can go on and on and on and on. The next Sunday, the church will be empty. We're not trying to keep the church full, but our mission, is, that's not our mission. Yes, you are a thief yesterday, but today you could be the, the next preacher. Hallelujah. That, that's what God created you to be. You just change your ways to become some, someone different. When, when, when people are talking about Saul, saying, Saul, you know, you're killing people, Saul, you're a bad person. That is not what God sees. God sees Paul. So God is seeing the Paul in you, but not the Saul in you. Hallelujah. Let people see the Saul in you. Discredit you about the Saul that is in you. But God is see seeing the Paul in you, and he's bringing you somewhere. Amen. You may be a killer yesterday, but there is a higher mission for you, and you will get there. Hallelujah. The reaction of the people was what? He has gone to the guest of a sinner. That's what people were saying, because people focus on Saul. They do not see where God is bringing you. Hallelujah. Are you following me? So the people were shocked. How can you go to the, the, the house of a sinner? You, Jesus. But Jesus came for the sinners. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the outcome of this Zacchaeus story is simple. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possession to the poor. 
And if I have cheated anybody of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Four times. What was this? What created all of this? Zacchaeus, come here. I'm going to your house. Jesus saw the potential in Zacchaeus, spoke about the potential in Zacchaeus. Jesus did not say to Zacchaeus, you took people's money, you do this. No. When you focus to the potential, the person changes. Zacchaeus understood that there was love in Jesus. It is because of that love that, that Jesus said what he said. Automatically, it triggered him to change immediately and say, if I took something from anybody, I'm going to give it back four times. Four times. Four times. Hallelujah. The prophecy we're teaching in the house has a mission to empower you, to charge you to a higher level, to correct, to bring you to the next level, as I was saying, from a person who did not speak English, who was a new in Christianity, the prophecy I was receiving every time was able to empower me to get somewhere. By listening to the teachings, by reading the books Apostle is writing, you are certainly and surely going somewhere. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Can we put our hand together for Pastor John Baptist, please? Praise the Lord, somebody. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Somebody is happy to be in the house of the Lord? If you are not happy, you will be happy by the time you leave. Amen? Amen. God is patient with us. You know, as uh, Pastor Jean Baptiste was saying, this season, uh, you know, focus a little bit because it's for all of us. Somebody say all of us. It is not just for few chosen ones. It is for everyone who was born again, uh, who was a Christian. And if you're not a Christian, this is a good moment and a good time to become one. Yeah. That amen was weak. Yeah. You know, Christianity is beautiful. Uh, when I talk about it, you know, I, I know what I'm talking about. Christianity is so beautiful. Don't take it for granted. Amen? Yeah. You know, when we, we are Christian for a long time, we, we feel like, oh, you know, yeah, it's the routine. We come to church. We love Jesus. But it is beautiful. I, I love to be a Christian. I enjoy it. I'm so thankful. I, just imagining living this life without being a disciple of Christ, man, it will be very difficult. Sometimes I think about unbeliever and I feel like, how do they manage in this life? Huh? Even us who are Christians is not easy. Now this one who have no backup, no father in heaven and all this stuff. How, how do they manage? How do you manage with these cares of life in the valley moment? How do you manage? You know, you can lose your head, your brain and your mind. But I am grateful that Christ found me. Are you grateful that Jesus found you? Yes. Are you grateful? Yes. Praise the Lord. You know, in this season where we are, it is the right season. It's not because we're nowhere before. Don't get in that mind thinking, thinking, no, we are having church. No, 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 no. We've been having church since day one this church began. All right? Don't get in that mindset of uh, immature. You say it's mature thinking. All right? We've been having church wherever two or three gather in his name is in our midst. A church is like a human being. It grows. The clothes you used to wear when you were five years old, when you turn 15, you don't wear those clothes. It's not something that's abnormal with you. All right? So in life, we grow. Somebody say we grow. we grow. And so the church is a living being. It grows. The vision grows. It changed shaped, right? So God work with people in seasons. Somebody say in seasons. in seasons. And so never let this critical mind always come in and say, oh, see, something was wrong before, now something is good now. It's not, you know, I throw that in the garbage, make me puke. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. You know I like to speak straight to you. Yeah, get it out there. We've been having church. We've been having worship. We've been having preaching. We've been having teaching. We've been having Sunday school. We've been having boarding. We've been having evangelism. We've been having women ministry. We've been having church the day God decided this church is his church. Hallelujah. Your kid doesn't start existing just when they begin to be 15 years old. They were even kids already since they were in the womb of, of your wife. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Somebody say, we're having church? Whenever God is, there is church there. I want to call your attention, as Pastor G.B. was saying, we don't want to miss this moment. The power of a prophetic word, it is immeasurable. You can measure it. His effect is too powerful. Too much. There are some people sitting here, all you need is a word. I will say that again. It's not the U.S. Army or the Dow Jones to take all their goods and give it to you. What you need is just a word. A word can change your situation, your condition, your life direction, just like that, bang, in a second. Word is powerful. You know what Sarah needed when she was barren for all these years? Her husband is 100 years old. She needed a word. They prayed, but they didn't have a word. There are Christians who believe without a word. In fact, it's illegal in the spirit to pray without a word. Somebody who's praying without a promise is just wasting his time. You should not be praying without a promise. So we live our lives in the general. But God wants us to live our life in the specific. When you live your life in the general, it is easy for you to become a victim of anything. You fall for anything. You can stand for anything. You have no specific direction. And sometimes when the word of the Lord comes, it doesn't make sense. In fact, most of the time, it does not make sense. The word that will change your life will not make sense to you. But because we are so minded and intellectual and intelligent, we assess all things by the brain. Mistake. God is not a brain. God is a spirit. So when he speaks, he speaks a spiritual language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not an intellectual, Cartesian, human language. No. God speaks spirit language. So, if you want to understand, you have to have an understanding of spiritual language. He said, the things of God are spiritually discerned. So, when God goes to Samaria through the prophet Elisha, when Samaria has been besieged by the enemy for so many years, that famine hit Samaria with such a might that people begin to eat their own children to survive. I'm not talking about an economical crisis where you still eat burger. There is no more, no more McDonald's. They closed down. Economy is so bad. The day McDonald's closed down, the economy is really bad. <laughs> All right? So in Samaria, no McDonald's, they closed down. No fast food closed, no restaurant, everything is shut down. Nobody has money, nobody has the power to purchase or to sell anything. The king panicked now, and then they went and see the prophet. You know the time is coming where government will run and look for wisdom in the church. Oh, my God. I, I wish everybody was clapping hands for this one, really. Do it for God, because that's what he said. In Micah chapter 2 and Isaiah, he said, that's a word that came from prophetess years back. 
He said, the mountain of the Lord will be above every other mountain. But sometimes we look on ourselves so down that we don't think we have something to offer. I have come to change that perspective. I have come to change that mindset. You have something to offer. In your workplace, you are the voice of God. In your family, you are the voice of God. In your church, you are the voice of God. In the metro and in the bus, you are the voice of God. Amen. Elisha said, is that bad? Tomorrow, my God. But this time, there will be no more famine. Ay, 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 ay. Now, all the brainy, smart economists, he went and said, hold it. Do you really have a, an assessment of how this thing, even the crisis of 1929 is nothing. This is bad. One day, no, you mean tomorrow? Hello? Hello. <laughs> how bad is your situation? No, no, no. How bad? Is it bad as Samaria? Is it worse than the crisis in Samaria? But the prophet did not speak based on the reality of earth. <laughs> That's where prophecy is powerful. Prophecy does not speak from earth perspective. Prophecy speaks from heaven perspective. Because a day... For the Lord is a thousand days, years in F. So when God said, tomorrow by this time is over, he's talking about a supply that comes from above. Yes, it's mean this going to be supernatural. Every word of God is pregnant with supernatural potential. Amen. Not natural. I'm preparing your mind right now. He said the famine is over. Somebody say, even if God, somebody say God. God. The guy was spiritual. So the guy I'm talking about who's about to doubt was not just an earthly guy. He said, even if God opened the window, so he knew the scripture. He understood in the spirit of revelation, there are doors and there are windows. Okay, let me discipline myself. There are doors and there are windows. So he said, we know the doors. But even if the windows open, you know Malachi chapter 3? I will open what? Not the doors, please. There are some provision that come from the door to give you salvation. But there are some provision that come from windows to make you enjoy the fruit of salvation. So the windows, he didn't say the window. The windows of heaven. That's for supply. Whenever you talk about windows, you talk about supply. And so he said, even if God opened all the supply and the barns, there is no way this situation can change by tomorrow. And Elijah said, you know your Bible, you're spiritual, but there are some depths you haven't got there yet. So guess what? What you don't believe is going to happen, you won't eat of his fruit. And therefore, you will see it with your eyes. But this food, juicy food that we've been missing for all this year, we haven't eaten goat meat. You will, you, will see it, you will see it be cooked before you. Pounded yam with pepper soup. You will see it. You will even smell it. The ugali, you will smell it. But you won't taste it. I pray that's not your portion in Jesus' name. Are you hearing me? You know when the devil want to really punish you, he will make everything accessible but you can't touch. Hmm, so good. I can see it jumping there in the pot. That's what the prophecy that's the prophecy that come to pass for unbelievers. When I say unbeliever, I'm not saying non-Christian. I'm saying the Christian who are unbelievers. 
Yeah, catch me. This, you, they are Christian who are unbelievers. They don't believe the word of the Lord because they, they want it to be so logical. Surely, you know the rest of the story. It did come to pass the next day. And he saw it, smelled the goods, but he didn't taste it. The power of the prophetic word. One day, Saul went out looking for the donkeys of his father. You know the story. Check this out. Saul, in his mind, he was so accomplished. He felt so blessed. Saul was at his best. He thought the best that God has for him was to be a donkey keeper. He made a living doing that. It was wonderful. It was not shameful. He didn't go steal. He worked and labor very nobly. He was convinced, I have reached my top. This is for somebody here too. Everybody was looking at Saul. Wow. You're keeping donkeys? That's amazing. Good for you. You are so well blessed. Until he came around the prophetic influence. And he realized there was more. This morning, my prayer is somebody will know there is more. Amen. You have done well. You are actually rocking the boat. But according to God's destiny for you, you have not reached where you should be. Yeah. When you come around prophetic influence, what used to be good is no longer enough. You begin to reach for better. Yeah. That business is doing well, but you haven't seen nothing yet. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Around prophetic influence, you realize the next step that God has for you for glory manifestation. Many people are packed spiritually, financially, socially, maritally, intimacy, whatever it is. They are doing well, but pack. But around prophetic influence, you again feel like, oh, you mean there is more than being a donkey keeper? Uh, you mean, what do you mean? You know, the word that you receive can catapult you and change your status. The guy went out one day, a donkey keeper, that his testimony of donkey keeping was collapsing because he lost the donkeys. That's why sometimes God will make you fail a little bit. There are some people, God wants you to start your own business, but you're so insecure that you rather have your $8 an hour it is more safe every day for eight hours. I calculated eight dollars an hour by eight at sixty-four dollars. You feel safe. Do you understand? Okay, let it increase instead of eight dollars an hour. Let's say twenty dollars an hour. <laughs> so you have your twenty dollars an hour multiplied by eight. That's hundred and sixty dollars a day. You want more, but you are afraid because this one at least I know every month is coming in. Huh? Then they fire you. <laughs> you know this boss in the name of Jesus. The devil is taking my job away. Hey, I claim it, I claim it. You know there are some job you're losing is a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Are you hearing me some? <laughs> if you didn't lose this job, you will feel like, yeah, donkey keeper for life. <laughs> Now you lost this job, suddenly your capacity increases. And you feel like, eh, I can own my own business and hire people instead of being the one they are hiring. From today, I won't look for a job. From today, people who look for a job will look for me. Yeah. Hallelujah! So, ladies and gentlemen, what you felt you lost, don't cry anymore. Because something has to leave from something better to come. 
You catch this. That includes your boyfriend who dropped you. <laughs> that includes your girlfriend who dropped you. And now you're just crying. Let it go. Some things have to go for something better to come. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, King Saul went out of there walking differently. Because when the anointing oil touched you, you change. The guy in one day, it was over. He went out one day having a bad testimony as a donkey keeper where he thought he was rocking the boat. And in his tears and discouragement and fears and worries, he ended up hanging out in the prophetic influence that catapulted him and revealed to him really what was his true status according to God. The prophet said, You've done well keeping donkeys, but donkey keeping time is over. Uh, okay, you're now going to be a king. Huh? <laughs> it's like taking the gentleman who's cleaning or doing a, a, a simple job in a company who have not gone to school to have a manager's degree and CEO degree. He never sat in a boardroom and take any decision. You understand? He's not educated at that level. He's doing very well his job at this other level, but he's, he's not. The, and then one day they walked to him and said, stop cleaning there in the toilet. That says the Lord. Tomorrow you will be now the, the CEO of this company, so come in suit and tie. He will say, you prophet, you're crazy, man. You are right. Every prophetic word sounds crazy. Because it speaks of your potential. It speaks of what could be. Me see you. Uh-uh. In my family, no see you. <laughs> Grandfather cleaned the toilet. Daddy was a specialist in that area. I am taking after the legacy of my parents. God is about to change somebody's legacy. Yeah. I say God is about to change somebody's legacy. Yeah. Hallelujah. The dog that eat your uncle won't catch you this time. <laughs> I am loving church. <laughs> One day Anna went to pray and the backslided prophet. I say backslided. His name is Eli. All right? He didn't understand diagnosis versus prognosis. So Eli goes, you, woman there, your lips are moving drunker. You just come from the nightclub Saturday night and you show up to church like that. Don't you fear the Lord? Backslided prophet. And then Anna said, Papa, no. You know, your servant is just so worried. I'm mixed emotions with him. I'm crying. I'm suffering. I, I want to have this baby, but my husband rather give me love than baby, you know. And I thank God for the love, but I want a baby. That's why I, I don't know how to talk anymore in English or French or Kirundi or, or Swahili or Fulani or Spanish. You know, that language don't cut it for me. So my lips begin to move on their own. Because this is beyond human. It's beyond my mind. So I'm not drunk. And the prophet said, go, my daughter, and let it be so unto you. Amen. No, 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 no. You miss it at first, backsliding prophet. So I don't believe this word anymore. Sometimes you miss your opportunity. Because you focus too much on analyzing things. She went home. You know when she got pregnant? She got pregnant first with the word before she got pregnant with the baby. <laughs> Sarah got pregnant with a word first before she got pregnant with a baby. You need to be pregnant with a business first. Before you can birth a business. A word first. 
Praise the Lord. I don't know. It was what? A couple weeks, three weeks. I don't remember. Is Aaron here? Aaron? Mighty Aaron is not here. Oh, he's, he's upstairs. Uh, is Aaron's wife the upstairs as well? Okay. Uh, it was three weeks or months. I don't remember. I give a prophecy to uh, Aaron. And I said, you are a pastor. And then I turned speaking. His wife was not there. And I said, the Lord just spoke to me. Tell your wife. You were here at church. It's recorded. I said, tell your wife. The business is collapsing and it's feel like she want to discourage. She's discouraged. She want to give up. But don't give up because the business is coming back alive again. I see clients coming in. Amen. Yesterday after the teaching, he hold me outside and say, you know what? I want to testify this to you. When you give us this word, the business was about to stop. We're about to close because there was no client. She do catering and stuff like that. Good Ghanaian food. I had no clue of the situation. I just spoke a word. I said, I see the clients coming now. Yesterday he told me, there is no day that passed by since the word that no clients, the clients didn't call. He said, in fact, there are so many clients prophesy for us that we will not just cook from our home, we will have our own restaurant. In a month. Without advertisement. Just one word. And it summoned the clients. Without advertisement. Because they've captured the word. It didn't make sense because the business was dead. We are closing this thing out. We're done. Discouraged, beaten. God in his mercy and love felt like, no, you won't close this. What you need is no connection. What you need is no advertisement. What you need is a word. And this word will reverse this situation. And therefore, client begin to wake up and call wondering why I didn't call last time. Where were they? You know, when a word is released, it begins to unlock people who are, lock, who are supposed to be a blessing to you. <laughs> Can you imagine being in this city where Zacchaeus was? Are you ready for this? Can you imagine? Thank you for reading this. I think it was blessing them double, but it was four times. Quadruplo. We need a new song. Quadruplo, quadruplo. Not double, double. <laughs> That's another dimension. Yes, now imagine you are in that city and Zacchaeus has cheated you. Hey, thank you for cheating on me. Oh. <laughs> Do you understand? Some of you are crying today because somebody took advantage of you. Don't worry, we are in the season of restoration. And this time you are not asking double. You want four time. Somebody say four time. <laughs> My God. Now, just a prophetic word released Zacchaeus and everybody began to be rich in the city. What an investment that is. I understood the Bible when Matthew chapter 5 says, Bless are those who persecute you for my name's sake. Bless are you, you who are persecuted for my name's sake. In other words, everyone who have ever cheated on you in finances. Are you ready? Yes, Even those you don't know. You know, there are some people who took your money and said the business went down, but in reality, they rip you off. Yes. You don't know about those people. But sometimes you know about them, but they have no way to capture them. Because in this deal, you can sue them. Do you understand? They did it to you, and you don't know. All these years, I am anointed this morning because I am hungry in the spirit in a good way. The Zacchaeus who play you around, directly or indirectly. Today, I declare, this is the day of restoration. Whatever the devil has stolen by using anybody in any situation, let my money find me. Let my money find me. 
Money cometh. Money cometh. Come to me. For the sake of a gospel. For the sake of a harvest. Oh, money cometh. Yanda yala gada gaya gaya. You know, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Don't, don't do like that, money come here. Don't. Money come here. Ay, 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 ay. Come on, throw some at me here. Come on. Money come. Give it to me. I get it in. Pastor GB, let's take it in. Let's take it in. Let's take it in Jesus' name. Receive your portion. You know, <laughs> God is such a God of restoration. Don't play with this thing, eh? You will be shocked. You see, that's, that's the difference between the natural. You know the natural man, but you know what? I know at my job I get paid only 10 bucks now, so where money will come? Where? Don't worry. Be spiritual. Be spiritual. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is such a God of restoration. He is the God of restoration. Amen. You will not die. There's nobody who will die and God owe them something. It will be against him. I will say it again. Amen. God will not owe any human being anything. Amen. So if you die and God owe you, ah, 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 this is against his word. Yes, sir. So I feel in my spirit, you know, there's people who rip you off. Really, seriously. You have lost money in places where they convince you this is what the right place to put the money. Even that one also, I get it back four times. I will even go further. Amen. Even the money you sow by making mistake yourself. Yes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Some of you are going, oh, you know, you're just making us excited. When that money comes, make sure you testify and give me my portion. So I'm not, I'm not getting you excited for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. One day, the sons of Jacob and Abraham and Isaac, very wild kids, Levi and Simeon, Levi and Simeon were powerful in anger. They were people, you do something against them, you will pay it back. They will make sure they get you on the other corner. So, Samaria in these days, called Sh- Sh- Sheme in the other days, so let's call it Samaria. They took their sister Dina and played with her. And these boys, all of these 12 children, those two, Simeon and Levi, that's why Mo- Moses struggled with anger issue. Because it was from the tribe of Levi. So Levi and Simeon, if you push, you slap here, they don't turn the other cheek. You're going to have it twice back. <laughs> so this guy is eye for eyes, not even eye for eyes, one eye for two eye. <laughs> they were violent. So they make this false covenant, circumcise all the men in Samaria. Three days after they know they can't walk properly anymore, they kill all the men. And leave only the women. A country just with women. Their dad was not happy. I want to show you the power of restoration of God. How he will not owe anybody anything. When Jesus came on the earth, he made sure he paid a visit to Samaria. Even though, according to the culture, he has no right to pass through Samaria. And you know the story, he met a young lady. She was not young. But she was young because the best part of her life was yet to come. We call her the Samaritan woman. He met her on the well. They have a very specific conversation. At the end of the story, she was so moved by the prophetic expression 
that came through Christ. She became the first evangelist, even when Christ is not dead yet. And you know what she said? The Bible said she went and called all the men, not the woman. God was setting up a stage for restoration for Samaria. God was saying, through a woman called Dina, all Samaria men were killed at one time. Now, through another woman called the Samaritan woman, all the men shall be saved. God restored back to Samaria all the killing men this time, he make all the men living. God has the mind to restore. I'm going somewhere. It means even the suffering that have gone through your family from generation to generation to generation, God has not forgotten. The wrong that was done to your great, great, great father The manipulation and the abuse that was done to your great great dad and your mother and your grandmother. The money that was stolen from them. The dignity that was robbed away from them. The dishonor that was put on your family through your great grandfather and then your father and God and so on. We are a generation here where Jesus want to come with a full restoration. Amen. Complete, total restoration. It's called generational restoration. Amen. I am receiving on the behalf of all my family line. From back past, from my mother's line, from my father's line, for thousands of years. Father, here I am, restore it all to me. In Jesus' mighty name. Restore it back to you. Restore it back to you. Receive the restoration of your fathers. Receive the restoration of your grandfathers. Of the generation of your family line. In Jesus' name. Sit down. I take it. And I receive it. And I believe it. And I will see it. I take it. I believe it. I receive it. I will see it. On the first day of Pentecost, on Mount Sinai, 3,000 people died. It's written in the scriptures. On the first day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came, 3,000 men were born again. Did you catch this? Yes. On Mount Sinai, 2,000 years behind, 3,000 men died. On the same day, it's called Pentecost Day, a harvest day. 2,000 years later, on the same day of the first Pentecost, with the introduction of the Holy Spirit, that is, the Holy Spirit, it is the token of our inheritance. The Holy Spirit is like the dowry. God put a dowry on you so his son will marry you. When you put a deposit on a house, no one can visit the house anymore. So the Holy Ghost is the first fruit. It is a deposit on us. When the Holy Ghost was deposited, it gave us the right to know we are here. There's an inheritance for us. 3,000 people were born again that day. God is a God of restoration. Do you understand? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I would like to stir up the atmosphere and everyone who, has, who was here with us on Sunday, eh, on Saturday, we will, by faith, begin to minister to people around us based on what I taught you yesterday. Are you ready for that? But I will begin and I will release you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I want, if it is okay, you know, I, I don't want people to miss this moment. 
Eden bring our children in. They need to be in this atmosphere. So if you can release the children at this time for them to come and be with us. And I would like uh, the worship team stay there. Uh, the music people in the background can put the music. When the time comes, I will tell you to drop the light. And we begin to minister to one another in a very powerful way. I say those people were at the training. All right? So if you are not at training, it's okay. You're going to receive today. And I believe by impartation, something is going to begin to happen for you. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I don't want anybody to miss this. I want everybody to be in. I don't want somebody to be out there and not be a part of this. Because God wants to speak. God speaks all the time, continually. He never stops speaking. You, you need to know that. We just tune to the right frequencies and we begin to hear God's voice. And I think I taught you good enough yesterday for you to begin to operate to a certain extent at the level of faith and grace that you have. All right? Don't, don't force yourself outside of your faith level. If not, you can become dangerous. Thank you, Lord. Even right now, stand up on our feet. Put a little quiet music in the back there. Really an easygoing one. Thank you, Lord. That's good. These are the days of restoration. I don't know. Is uh, Michelle, Michelle, Michelle King? No, not Michelle. Okay. So that's why, you know, when, when we begin this thing, you don't want to be outside. All right. Last Sunday, I called a woman, uh, Mutugi. What was that name again? Murugi. Where is she? Is she here today? No, uh, 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 yeah, come here. Stand here. Is she here, Murugi? Don't freeze today. If you're here, I want you to stand up. <laughs> 